Hello and welcome to my workshop. Today I'm going to do a 3D engraving in a rather thick piece of brass. Um, brass in Australia is extremely expensive. Uh, this is a piece of sheet that's a um, quarter of an inch or five millimeter in thickness and I've got um, a bit of square foot of it. That's two hundred and fifty dollars nearly. So um, you know you've got to go sort of real sparingly with brass but the outcome in brass is spectacular. It's really really beautiful <laughs> uh, and it shows off what a well-made CNC router can actually do. Now to get a good result uh, especially in metal you need a good solid rigid CNC router. Uh, the majority of the routers that you do see for sale um, just just won't hack it. Won't, won't do a very good job at all. Um, so be very careful what you what you purchase because you could very easily be throwing your money away especially if you think you're going to get a result like I'm going to show you now. Um, so this is going to be a straight 3D carving into this brass. So I will be showing you the full setup of setting the machine up to do the job. The actual job as well, so there will be some high speed photography. And um, I hope you enjoy it. And if I get enough requests, the next video um, I will show you how to take a grayscale picture and uh, put it into ArtCam, treat it in ArtCam, clean it up and make a 3D uh, relief and we'll machine it in brass as well. So um, we'll see how we get on with this one. Okay so the first thing we're going to do we're going to take the the router head or the the spindle and I've already got a tool, an engraving tool put in it. It's called a conical tool and here's one. Very very sharp. And the tool is, is in here. A bit small to see at the moment until I zoom in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over and I've already pre-marked on the material, uh, the center of the program. Now, in our cam, I made the start of the program in, in the center of the, the job, and it's going to spiral out. Um, I find engraving into metal, especially if it's a circular um, piece, that is the best way to do it. Rather than go back and forth in the X, you tend to leave some lines. I'll zoom you in so you can see exactly where the tool's going and you have to be extremely accurate with this because the whole relief is 40 millimeters in diameter uh, and the Z is only one millimeter um, you know the, the relief in this so it's um, it's very precise uh, if you if you don't get it just right you can muck it up <laughs> So here we go. Okay, so that's good enough for the X, Y. Now, this particular spot here is called the G54. Um, this is the work offset. Now when I say the G54, um, or commonly known as the zero zero point of the work, um, now G54 offset is just really um, the code in Mark III uh, that tells Mark III this is the start of the job. So you have to label it something. Now. The machine home position is here. This is where the um, 
the zero point or the machine home position is here. And what makes or where the name work offset comes from, it just simply means it's offset from the machine home. So it's, it's really not complex at all. Okay, so now we're going to set the uh, x, y, zero. So now there's the machine offset. That, that is where the, uh, sorry, the machine home position there. So if we, now we're indicating where the work zero, zero is, or the G54. So we go zero, zero. So now we set the X and Y zero. So the Mac 3 knows exactly where the X, Y is. So now we're going to tell it where the Z is. Now that's uh, an automatic setting on this machine. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we start, we're lifting the tool up a ways. And there's about fine. So this is the Z tool height setter. So now we're going to set the automatic uh, Z height. So switching to the, the Mac 3 screen, you'd go to the auto tool set and the, the tool automatically comes down and registers the height in relation to the tool. Now one last job that you absolutely need to do, or I think it's necessary for you to do anyway, is go over to this little window here and regen the toolpath. Now you just watch what happens here on this screen. It's a big program so it's going to take a minute. There you go. Mac 3 now has reconfigured everything with those settings that we put in there. So Mac 3 and the computer knows exactly what to do and where to do it. Okay, so the RPM of the spindle is set at maximum. In this case it's 24,000 RPM because uh, you've got such a very very fine pointy uh, tool and we want a nice clean finish so and the, and the step over is a, a very minute amount uh, it's <laughs> about um, probably 10% the width of a human hair so it's very very small amount um, okay so I'm also going to set the feed rate right down really low and let it come in quietly. All right. So we'll start the spindle up and we'll we'll go for it.
here. I've had a little bit of a disaster. Um, 75% through, uh, the end of the tool decided to snap off. Oh, if I can just show you that. You can see the end of the tool is missing. So, it happens to everyone. I am no exception. Um, so, and I'll, I'll actually show you what it actually did to the, um, the carving. Hopefully that's not too glary for you. Um, if you notice sort of in this area here, and certainly this area here, and around there, it's sort of ragged. Um, so I think part of the chip, part of the tip actually had come off and it was doing a bit of a ragged cut, but you couldn't detect it, you know, it wasn't any making any real difference in sound and then um, it did make a difference sound <laughs> because it went very quiet so um, there you go that's what happens but all is not lost so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a much shall we say much more robust tool this is a 90 degree um, tool, engraving tool, so it's much more robust. So what I'm going to do is um, I will reset the zero much deeper, maybe half a millimeter deeper than this, um, and of course I'm going to recut this and I'll cut that section out. So, you know, all is not lost. You can sort of regain, uh, you know, regain the piece. But it's just, you know, this is like 45 minutes into the cut. So it's 45 minutes of lost work. So this time I'm actually going to use a bit of paper to find the top of this material. And then I will adjust um, it in Mark III to take it uh, half a millimeter further down. So this is a, a very delicate operation, I suppose. So what I'm gonna do is I'll take you up here to Mark III. Okay, so there's a number of things I'm going to do here. First of all, I'm going to rewind the program right back to the start. Uh, and that's simply done by going here, pressing that, and it's rewound it back to the start. The next thing I'm going to do now is um, reset the Z with this new tool in, albeit half a millimeter lower than what the actual material is. This is really just to feel, you know, where the tool is rather than try and see it with your eyes. I've set the jog very slow. Okay, so that's the actual top of the material. So I'll just take you back up here to the screen. And incidentally, I've set the jog um, at a very low level here too. So I have full control over it. So set the Z zero like so. Now I'm gonna take it off that point off that from that area and take it further on there. Okay, so now I'm off the material. I notice it's moving the camera around quite a bit. So I'm going to trick it now to think that uh, the material's uh, actually a lot lower than what it actually is. So we come here to the Z minus.
Okay, so that's nearly zero. So I'm going to take it down half a millimeter now. Actually, maybe a little bit more. Uh, okay, let's get more precise here by taking this down. I could actually write the number in there, but I'm being lazy. Six point five, maybe. Seven. There you go. Point seven of a millimeter, actually deeper. Now that should get rid of all the messiness that's been left behind. So it just means we're we're actually actually going to be machining point seven of a millimeter further down. And we can now get rid of that and press for the new zero. Now I'm going to lift it up. Oh, I'd better reset the jog. Okay, so now we can restart. So that's the horse's head, and it's now come out actually, it's now come out beautiful. So now I've put a, a six millimeter two flute end mill in. I'm just gonna set the zero up, the Z zero, and we're gonna cut this out.
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the result. It wasn't easy, <laughs> as you could see, um, but hey, you know, we all have breakages and um, you've just got to do it again. <laughs> But thankfully I didn't waste the piece of material, I just set it uh, 0.7 of a millimetre further down, deeper, and it's come out perfectly. If, if enough of you uh, would like to, uh, the next video, um, I'll show you how to put something like this together uh, using at cam in my case um, if you wish so just drop me a line send me a message and um, I'll see what I can do so thank you for joining me for this video and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and it's enlightened you a bit on the use of um, good uh, little CNC routers um, and like as always be warned there's a lot of rubbish out there um, so be careful what you're buying thank you for joining me um, press like subscribe and come into my channel and uh, there's over 300 videos now for you to have a look at so all I've got to say now is bye for now. <laughs>